A very warm welcome and a good day to one and all. Welcome once again to a new session we shall be discussing today on types of bars. A bit on myself, Sheetal Gupta, an assistant professor at the AISSMS College of Hotel Management and Catering Technology in Pune. My email address is mentioned here. For any further questions, do contact me on my email. So let us begin today our topic on types of bars. When we talk about bars, we must realize that a bar is a licensed place selling all kinds of alcoholic beverages to its guests or customers. Bars are found in hotels, resorts, clubs, casinos, and could also be independent individual outlets. A bar is one of the key revenue generating areas of the F&B department of the hotel industry. The main function of the bar is to serve alcoholic drinks in appropriate glassware according to the guest's preference. So as I mentioned before, the bar is a high revenue generator for the hotel. Let's now talk about the types of bars. The different trends in bar design have encouraged different types of bars based on their looks and decor. For example, a restaurant-based bar seeks a look of casual elegance with a trend towards bistro cuisine with a setting which is comfortable yet classy. Now we will talk about some of the unique bars. A concept bar is a modern trend of concepts where the patrons and guests are whisked off to an exotic location or they are based on a theme. Participatory bars, as they mentioned, where the guests can participate part of the action. They could play pool, billiards, video games, or even sing karaoke. So a karaoke bar would be a best example of a participatory bar. A most important type of service bar or the dispense bar, this is a bar that pours for the table service only, usually in conjunction with the food service. It does not serve the guests directly, but deals with refilling the drink orders brought by the waiters. The service bar is usually located in the back area. If multiple access is required, it may be located in the food outlet itself. Pubs. The word derived from public house and the short form was pubs, which are licensed to sell alcoholic beverages. Pubs mainly serve all kinds of beers along with other alcoholic drinks. A pub is a drinking establishment fundamental to the culture of Britain, Ireland, Australia, Newfoundland, Canada, and New Zealand. In many places, especially in their villages, a pub could be the focal point of the community. Then we speak about the lounge bars or the salon bars. A lounge is an area meant for relaxing, which is normally located near the reception. Some hotels have a lounge bar, which serves all kinds of alcohol to the guests at the lounge. The drinks could be collected from the main bar, and carried on a tray to the lounge and served to the guest. If there is a large footfall and the volume of business is more, there is adequate area in the lounge, a separate bar could be set up to address the needs of the guests. Lounge bars are often seen in airports, clubs, casinos, 
luxury hotels, even on passenger cruise ships. The portable or the crash bar. This is a typical extension of a hotel's beverage service with the banquets, meetings, receptions, conferences, or conventions are being held. Most portable bars range in the length of four to eight feet with built-in cold storage units. It is foldable and on wheels for easy mobility. It should also contain a wastewater reservoir, removable and adjustable shelves, a speed rail where the quick meaning and the quick moving alcohols are stored, and storage areas, stainless steel backsplash and a work table for the ease of maintenance. Hence, these portable bars could also be used in special functions or banquets. The banquet bar. This is a temporary bar set up in a banquet hall to serve alcoholic drinks during a specific function. Type and quantity of the drinks to be served are generally predetermined at the time of booking the function. The drinks may either be brought by those who wish to drink or paid by the host for all the drinks consumed by his guests during the function. The banquet bar collects the required stock either from the main bar or from the stores directly. Let's now talk about the sports bar. Sports bars, as the name suggests, are pretty self-explanatory. They are places where guys go to watch sports. A famous soccer match or a cricket match, IPLs are all played on large screens. They have gigantic flat wall screens where a patron or a guest could enjoy a drink or a beer and watch a good game. Then we have the wine and the cocktail bar. The wine bar, as the name suggests, sells only wines of all kinds, mainly the expensive varieties. It has a good collection and a wide range of wines. The guests are given free samples for tasting before they make their purchase choices. They may buy bottles of wine for consuming later or could sit at the wine bar and have a sip. This kind of bar is comparatively a new concept becoming very popular amongst the wine connoisseurs and affluent people. The cocktail bar is more of a hip and happening place serving all kinds of cocktails along with other alcoholic drinks. It is found mainly at airports, casinos, hotels and cruise ships. The dive bar. These are types of bars that are deemed the local dump where depression and shame is associated. They are usually empty and quiet, and the drinks are fairly inexpensive. The ice bar. Visiting an ice bar is something you should do at least once in your lifetime. Sip on a delicious cocktail or enjoy a glass of champagne. Obviously, the glasses are made entirely out of ice. The entire bar and the dance floor is made of snow. So it's a new concept especially in Norway and Sweden. The mini bar, a most important bar or the mini bar. These are small private snack and beverage bars that are found placed in the guest rooms. Typically a mini bar comes in the form of a counter with a small refrigerator stocked with a precise inventory. The in-room dining or the room service department is responsible for replenishment of the mini bar. The room guests can take a beverage or snack at any time during his stay. The bar is normally stocked with small bottles of alcoholic beverages, juices, and soft drinks. 
It may also include candies, cookies, some crackers, and other small snacks. The fashion bar. The new concept of fashion bar is an ideal space for fashion companies to approach thousands of potential guests and customers who are eager to consume the latest trends. It is the new meeting point for models, designers, photographers, and bloggers, DJs, fashionistas, celebrities, and the city's most trendy high society, where they can chill over a glass of drink or a glass of wine. The Tiki Bar. The tiki bar, as the name suggests, are bars that are themed on the tiki culture, which is a South Sea pop culture of the United States. The tiki bar are made of bamboos, canes, straw mats, decorated with tropical flowers, including orchids, fruits, etc. They dispense rum-based cocktails and mixed drinks such as a zombie, a planter's punch, etc. Typically, you would see a tiki bar on a beach in Hawaii. The sunken bar is a novel architectural concept in which the bar counter is actually built inside the swimming pool. In other words, it is sunken or immersed in water and surrounded where the bar waiter actually serves drinks inside the pool. The foyer bar. As the name suggests, such bars are situated in the foyer or the lobby area of some superior residential hotels and they serve drinks in the same area. However, if there is no such bar, most of the drinks are served to the guest seated in the foyer. Let me now show you a small video which talks about main bar essentials and shows some delicious mixed drinks being presented. Kindly pay attention to the video. Before we delve into cocktail essentials, we need to delve into some essential cocktail tools. Let's start with a muddler, essential for everything from muddling herbs to muddling fruit. Then a jigger, essential for measuring, some Angostura bitters, comes in handy with a great many cocktails, and then the components of a cocktail shaker. Here we've got a large stainless steel tumbler with which we can mate a rubber-rimmed pint glass, or we can take another smaller tumbler and, giving that a quick pound with the heel of our hand, seal the two together for a good shaking and then when it's time to retrieve the fruits of our labor simply cock the smaller tumbler forward and pour into your desired vessel possibly through a strainer like this which keeps any fruit pieces or other detritus from ending up in your glass then it's always handy to have a few squeeze bottles around for simple syrups and you want to have a combination lemon zester and channel knife like this for different types of garnishes and then a long cocktail stirring spoon is essential for both looking fancy and stirring some of those taller cocktails and you probably are already got a vegetable peeler, but it comes in handy in the bar. So that's all the absolute essentials that you're going to need. Now, what do you say we tie one on? Let's start with a gin and tonic. Into an old fashioned glass, we're pouring two ounces of good gin, squeezing the juice of half a lime and topping up with some tonic water. Everyone's aunt's favorite cocktail really is that simple. Garnish with a lime wedge if desired and serve. This is a very simple starting point. So measure and taste until it resembles that cocktail you've ordered on every nervous first date you've ever been on. Next up, we're moving to slightly more delicious territory than Moscow Mule. We're going to need the juice of half a lime and four ounces of vodka, traditionally Smirnoff. Not sponsored? Just saying. Add to an ice cube inside of a copper mug and then get ready for, get ready to add a little bit of, um, oh shoot. We need the tool that I left out from the beginning, the waiter's friend. Now we can top this guy up with ginger beer and add a squeeze of lime. You'll notice that I'm measuring alcohol but not mixers because this is going to come down to your taste. This is about how much booze you want in there. You can go ahead and adjust accordingly. Here comes that long spoon, looking pretty cool, and serve one of these guys up on a summer day to the delight of your friends and family. Speaking of summer cocktails, how about one of my favorites, the Negroni? With this guy we're talking equal parts, that 
that is one ounce each of sweet vermouth, good gin, and Campari, which is a bitter Italian liqueur. Like most classic cocktails, these guys come together to form something greater than the sum of their parts, and they are complemented by a little twist of orange peel. Sub the gin for whiskey and you've got yourself a Boulevardier. But now it's time to talk one of the most classic and contested of cocktails, the martini. We're making both a dry and dirty martini using different combinations of sweet vermouth, vodka, and olive juice. For the dirty martini, I'm going with two ounces of vodka, one ounce of sweet vermouth, and one ounce of olive juice. Not how I take my martini, but who am I to judge? You'll also notice that we are chilling our martini glasses with ice and water while we give our martini a good shake. And now I can absolutely guarantee you that I'm going to make a huge mess. Oh, see, I already, already made a mess. Dump out the ice water, clean up the inevitable spillage, and pour your martini into the waiting chilled glass. If you're using a Boston shaker, use that strainer that we mentioned earlier. And of course, this lightly tinted green martini would not be complete without an olive impaled upon a toothpick. Why anybody would drink the martini this way, I don't know. But again, not here to judge, here to inform. So here's how to also make a dry martini. We're using three and a half ounces of vodka to half an ounce of sweet vermouth. As always, these amounts are going to depend on the size of your martini glass. It is the proportions that you want to keep in mind. And remember that you can always stir this instead of shake it if you're not feeling very James Bondy today. And to prevent any and all ice fragments from ending up in our drink, we're going to strain this one through a fine mesh sieve. And there you go, two different martinis for two very different types of people. Next up, how about we refresh our palate with my favorite drink, the Old Fashioned. We're starting with two ounces of high quality bourbon to which we're going to add a few dashes of Angostura bitters. If you spill me down the side of the glass like that, a tradition that I just made up says that you need to lick it with your finger before adding a small dash of simple syrup and giving it a stir. Then if you want to add a little bit more complexity and theatricality to your Old Fashioned, simply slice yourself a thin round orange peel, hold over an open flame and give it a squeeze. If you make sure to use a fresh orange, the essential oils will spray out and ignite in a splendor of citrus flame. Give it a little rub around the rim of the glass and drop into the cocktail. And there you go, the Old Fashioned, a cocktail you kind of have to like if you have any sort of facial hair or tattoos. Well, I do hope all of you enjoyed that short video with interesting cocktails and drinks being mixed by a famous bartender, Babish. Certain reference books that I have used here for making this presentation are the Dennis Lilly Crap and John Cousins, and the YouTube video courtesy is Binging with Babish. A vote of thanks for all of you for paying attention and giving your time today to learn about the various types of bars. I do hope the small video and presentation has cleared few doubts in your mind regarding bars. Do keep in touch for any further queries on my email address mentioned in the beginning. Thank you and have a great day.